know, it's, it's where I belong on Wednesday evening. It's a, a blessing to come and see the people that I love, spend time with them, read the book that I love, preach the word like I love to do. God's just been good to me all day long. Amen? Amen. We got a good God. Amen. You just you just you just can't beat him now. Amen. We got a good God. If you got your Bible, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Chapter 5. Stay at home. 
restaurants and all that stuff and masks and social distancing and Lord knows you can't go here and you can go there. And Lord, it's crazy if that way of figuring that out. I don't know who figured all that mess out. But boy, they made a mess of that. Amen? Saying this is essential and that ain't and this isn't. Listen to me. If they don't think church is essential, what, what, where, where do they start at? Oh, that's the starting place. I mean, for us as children of God, uh, God's essential. Uh, it's a must for us. We, we, we want to talk to the Lord. We want to gather in His name. We want to have religious freedom in this country that we're guaranteed, uh, not by man, but by God. Uh, those are those inalienable rights that were promised by God that we have a man that can give them with it. Man will not be able to take them away. Amen. Amen. Man didn't give them to them. A man can't take them away. Amen. So, just listen. I want you to be encouraged tonight. But when I finish this message tonight, I want you to leave here with your head high and your shoulders squared and, and say, look, I, 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 you know, devil, I know you've got a playground uh, and things that you do and things that you try to accomplish. And I know, I uh, the roaring lion, you know, you go about seeking whom you may devour. Uh, but it says, I have the roaring lion. He's not a lion. He just tries to roar like one. Uh, but he's not a lion. He just thinks he is at times. Uh, he convinced himself of that, uh, but he's a defeated foe. What he is, yeah, a kid, a uh, pussy cat, maybe, uh, but not a lion. Uh, so, as you go through your day tomorrow, I, I want you to challenge yourself uh, to look at this situation uh, a little different than you looked at it today. Uh, when you when you go home tonight, uh, before you pillow your head, you should ask God, give me God, Lord, open my mind and my heart. Uh, God, take away my fear. Take away the fear that I have. I have fear in my heart. So, Lord, well, I want you to take that away. Uh, so, God, I can sleep in peace. Uh, and I think it would be a good thing for you to have God for. But I want to I get into this message tonight. Preachers often uh, try to look over these very simple verses, uh, very familiar but, but, but very neglected uh, at times. Uh, some texts uh, are ignored because they are so familiar. Uh, the reason is that they are so rich. They are so rich. John 3.16, they're rich. There's a lot of, oh, you, you can't preach on John 3.16, everybody knows that. My Lord, I could preach to Jesus come just on John 3.16. You know, it's so rich. And, and, uh, for uh, John 14, 27, uh, the Bible says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If it is time for the rapture and, and, and the tribulation and the end of time as we know it, uh, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. No fear there. Uh, and that the adversary, like I said, he's running around out of the wood like a lion roaring, uh, seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to devour a child of God yeah. that is loaded up with the Holy Spirit yeah. uh, and ready to take him on. You know, he's not going to, uh, first off, he's not going to challenge you anyway. Uh, because, listen, the Holy Spirit reveals himself through your character, through who you are, uh, how you carry yourself. If you walk around all mini mouth and, and everything all the time, we're sure the devil might think for a minute he can get the advantage over you. Uh, but, you know, when he roars, just roar back at him. You're much uh, more of a lion than he is. Uh, and, and your master is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, and he is yeah. the lion. Uh, so, you know, don't, don't, let, don't let the devil get you down. Sure enough, don't let him see you sweat. Don't let him see you sweat. Don't let him get under your skin. Uh, so, so, just because it's familiar doesn't mean we need to skip over it. Did you look at this verse where it says, Casting, verse 10, all your care upon him for he careth for you Amen. in other words you are in this verse look what it says casting all your care upon your care upon him for he careth for you so you're right here in this verse God got the, God got the answer to your mother grubs uh, and you're feeling down 
to me. That's every one of us. He knows who we are. He knows your cares. He knows your burden. He knows the hard times that you're going through. He knows the worry, the depression, the anxiety. He knows all of that. He said, give it to me. Cast it on me. I'll take it because I care for you. I care for you. So casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So much in this world now, uh, days has become so impersonal. Uh, it's the age of bigness. Everything's bigger and the numbers are bigger. And, and everything uh, seems to be, uh, wants to be our God or, or, or our Savior. Uh, we look at, we got things like Social Security and insurance policy and credit cards and uh, national debt and scanners and computers and all of that stuff, the foreshadows of the days of the Antichrist uh, that's coming and we're able to sign every person a number and all. We know what's going on. We see all of that. Uh, but listen, even in this, this massive world of uh, mass confusion and certainly many, many things that we don't understand, it, it doesn't matter to God. That's small things to God. That's not big things to God. Uh, don't look at it. Uh, listen, see yourself as God, uh, uh, a child of God, uh, with every all the power uh, that, that, that heaven possesses, all the power that our eternal God possesses, all the power uh, that our Savior possesses, all the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God belongs to you. Belongs to you. What can you fear? What, well, why would you fear? That all belongs to you. All of heaven belongs to you. You're, it's an inheritance. It's already yours. Look, but God still knows you. When all this stuff is going on, I want to remind you, God still knows you. As an individual, as a Jenny and a Jesse, and a Teresa and a Paula, and a Shelly Louise, and all of those, all those people. He knows all that. Yeah. He knows your name is Anna Shelby Louise. That's, that's a great God, a big God. Amen. It's a big God. He knows even your nickname. Amen. We don't get into them though. Amen. But God still knows you individually. And He does keep track of you, not on some you know, cosmic computer, but he sees you every day. Uh, I, 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 I would imagine it like this today, uh, as I thought on, on this, this scripture. I imagine God, as I walk by, he's standing right inside a window, looking out at me, not trying to interfere or interrupt my daily toils, my daily tasks, but just standing, watching over me, like you know you'll do when you have little kids and they get out and play in the gravel in the driveway, and you just sneak somewhere up on the porch behind the bush and don't say anything and just watch them carry on and, and live out their lives, and, and that's how God does us. He keeps up with us. He cares about you. He goes where you go. He sees where you're at. He knows what you're doing. He knows how you feel. He thank God. You know how I feel. God, you know how I feel. He knows how I feel. And when the burdens and the cares get too heavy for me, He asks me, cast them on me. Give them to me because I care for you. I care for you. And I can handle it. Listen, you can take every virus that's ever been named and all those that haven't been named yet. And God uh, look at them and says, that's nothing to me compared to the power of who God is. Yes. This virus is going to do what God says it can do. Yes. And no more. No no more. See, so, so when it gets accomplished, what God is out to accomplish, because I'm telling you right now, uh, God has to allow things like this. This thing's too big that it slipped past God and 
and God's over there snoozing in the recliner, and He don't know we're going through hell down here. He's very aware of that everything has changed. He knows that. He knows how we're we're perceiving it. He knows how we're looking at it, and He knows what it's doing to us on the inside. He's got a plan. Amen. He's got. He's working out a plan. They say, well, God, I wish you would have worked out another one. One I wouldn't like. <laughs> one that would have been fun. You know? But you know, very little would be learned in times like that. Because why? We forget about God. We forget all about God. But listen, now, I'm very thankful for this, that since the day this started, I have become so aware of God. Because, listen, I know this thing's too big for me. I know I can't handle it, beat it, run from it, outrun it, uh, or do it. I can't do anything. So I have no other choice but to look to my God. And my answer is my God. Amen. That's what my, what my answer is. My God. So I've had to I've had to slip out from under that burden of care and despair and distress and depression that's overcome me and overwhelmed me uh, as we sit there uh, just waiting for the time to go by and seeing what this thing's going to do. You know, uh, I said sometimes, but but you know what? I don't get scared. I don't get scared because God's not scared. Now, if I ever were to sense that God was scared, I'd die with a heart attack. But God's not scared. He's fine. He can handle it. So there, I have to lean on that. I have to lean on that and lean on God. He knows me by, by my name. He knows my name. That's such a great blessing to me. That's a great blessing to me. As God rolls over that big roll of dash in his head, my little man flips up there. Brother Jimmy Clark. And he gives me a thought. And he gives you a thought every day. And then he'll get to wonder where you're at and start looking. And like I said, he'll see you busy about your business, busy about the work of God. Busy about the things he's called you to do. But sometimes he'll just stand back and look and watch. Always there to protect you. Always there with a guard, a guarding hand over you. Always there responsible for you. Always there and he's responsible for you. You gave yourself to him. You, he bought you by his blood that he shed on Calvary's cross. He purchased you with a price. He bought you. You're his young man. You belong to him now. And you are his responsibility to keep up with. He keep up with you. And I thank God that he keeps up with me. Even though I forget where I'm at sometimes, he knows where I am. Amen. 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 Right. You get a little bit older, you understand that a little bit better. Yeah. You're just forgetting where you're at. Sometimes I'll be driving to the house and say, Hey, how in God may not be here? And where am I? I know y'all don't ever do that, but hey, I do. I do. You know, <laughs> and take and take me a minute, and I'll figure it out. Or I'll see something I know, and I'll say, "Well, Lord, have mercy." Now. I left home one night, carried poor work from at home, and we got out of work late, late two o'clock in the morning. And he needed to ride all the way out to his house out in cheap and uh. I drove off out there and carried him home. I guess I carried him home. He said I did. And then uh, I just got to driving around. Headed back to the house. And uh, well, just a minute, I found myself in New Augusta, Mississippi. I said, Lord, I'm going home. And here I am down in New Augusta. Three o'clock in the morning. You know, a good ways from the house now. And I had to drive about eight miles an hour all the way home on the side of Highway 29. I pulled over in the grass and just go real slow. But I had to keep up with where I was at the whole time. Because I know that if I started at New York on 29 and I, and I stayed on 29, I'd eventually run in the wrong town. So I, I kept that in mind and I got, and I got 
we were of that the whole time. I wish he'd have hollered before I left that boy's house and said, don't turn right, turn left. Go that way, don't go that way. But he didn't. He probably, you know, he probably got a sense of humor with that. Look at that poor old dumb puppy. He's lost to the duck and he don't know where he's at. Probably, you know, him and Jesus sitting there going, he'll get home in a minute. If he don't, we'll go get him. Amen. But I always know somebody's watching me. Amen? Amen. And the devil. Out there in the dark too watching. You know. But God makes sure he don't get an advantage over me. Humble myself under the mighty hand of God. He exalts me when I do that. God's bigger than I am. God's bigger than everything. God's bigger than everybody. God doesn't have any equals. Nobody equal with God. That triune God, nothing can stand against him. He's got this thing. So Jesus, like I said, looks at the individual over and over again in the New Testament when we read the, uh, the Gospels and we read the, the stories of, of the things that happened uh, during Jesus' life uh, just to show the individuality of, of how Jesus knew where everybody was. What, what Jesus said, Zacchaeus, get out of that tree and come down. Here? He just calls him by his name. Zacchaeus, come down here. I'm going to go to your house today. God said, I'm going to your house today. Why to perk you right up, man? Say, God's coming? Yep, God's coming today. And he said, Zacchaeus, come on. And the woman who touched him, he knew who touched him. He knew her name, knew where she was at, knew her problem, knew what she needed. Amen. But he needed her to testify. Right. And it was me. Yes. It was me, Lord. And he said, your sins are forgiven. And he healed her that day. Yes. The children, he laid hands on them and prayed for them. And the disciples said, oh, you going to get away? Y'all bothering the master. He said, oh, oh, oh. Forbid them not. Come unto me. Because even you will have to come uh, to the place that with the mind of a child, come to me like I'm your father and you're my child. And you, humble before me, call out to me. That's our relationship. That's the relationship you'll have to have with me before you can even get saved. You'll have to have that child like faith. That blind faith. If you get on top of the house and run to the edge, see daddy down there and just jump and say, daddy, catch me. You know daddy don't catch you. He's not going to let you hit the ground. That blind faith. That's the way you get saved. Just believe God can because he said he could. Believe God will because he said he would. Amen. Why? Because he's God. Amen. He can do it all. He can do it all. Even though who were demon possessed. Jesus knew. When that maniac of Gadara come running out of them tombs like a wild animal, no clothes on, hair sticking seven ways, here he comes running at Jesus. Jesus never batted an eye. And he run right down there and sat down right before Peter. And was calm. Amen. And Jesus kept, but, but, but Jesus didn't have any fear of him. He knew him before he ever got there, before he ever got off the boat. He knew he was what he was there for. To heal that man. To cast out those demons. I want you to think about that when trouble comes. Trouble comes. And it's almost it's almost impossible now to, to even get away from them. It seems like everywhere I go now, uh, my mind, or the devil, or the flesh, or whatever you want to call it, I always want to keep me reminded that everything's bad. Everything's bad. Everything's not bad. God's good. God knows where we are. God knows how to fix what's wrong. 
God had got a plan. The plan was written before the virus was ever a virus. The plan was written. God doesn't go into anything blind, not knowing what he's doing. It's part of God's plan. Y'all know, every one of us know as God's people, you have to admit, unless you're completely brainless, that we're in the last time. We're in those last days. And I want you to think about this, because this is the reason for this message tonight. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. There's going to come times out ahead of us between now and, and, and the end of this thing, and when this is all over with, that there's going to be great fear cast upon you. I mean, people, uh, even the media, uh, the politicians, all of it, they just clamor, 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 fear, fear, fear all the time. And God says there is no fear in faith. The, you say, well, I've got faith, but I've I got fear too. You can't have both. Faith casteth out fear. So remember who you are. Remember God's got it. Remember God can handle it. And God is, has not lost you. And you're not somewhere He can't see you or reach you or rescue you regardless of what happens. Cast your fears on Him. Don't let it get so hard on you that you start coming apart. That you begin to waver and, and, and buckle down under the pressure of the uncertainty of this thing. Be certain of this one thing. God can. God can. Amen. Cast your care upon Him. For He careth for you. All your care upon Him. But not only are you in the verse, you think about this, it says casting all your, that's you, cares upon Him. Your cares are in this verse in the Bible. All of those things that you would tell me that your cares are, your troubles are, your pains are, whatever they may be, they are covered right here. He says, cast all your care upon Him. He knows your care. He knows your burden. He knows the pressure. He knows the uncertainty that you have. He wants to clean the slate. He wants to wipe it clean. Start a brand new day. Put it all behind you. The devil with the devil. Amen? The devil with him. Don't worry about him. And don't worry about this, 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 whatever this is, overtaking you and destroying you. It's not going to do it. God's able. Cast out your, your care. All of them. All of them. What are your cares? What are your burdens? What has got you down? Tell you what. Get you, this is, a, this is a, a great exercise for you. Get you a piece of paper and write down your cares. What has got you so concerned? What has got you so scared? What has got you so confused? What has got you, what, what, what's going on? Write a list out of the cares that you have. Name them all, name all of them. Whatever they are, deep, dark, what, where, hey, hey, the deepest recesses of your soul go all the way down there. And get those things and dry them out, write them on that piece of paper. I want you to see them with your eyes and say them with your mouth. And then go to the Lord Jesus and say, Jesus, I got a list right here. But I want to remind myself because I want all my care cast upon you. I want to get up from here off of my knees when I finish praying. I want to know all of my care. I haven't left any hidden. None down in there. I'm tired of being scared, afraid, worried. I want to cast them on you. He 
said, do it. Go ahead. And you go down that list, Lord, it's this concern. And God, it's that concern. And, and Lord, it's my family. And God, it's me and what's going to happen. And, and what's going to happen here and what's going to happen there. And all of these things, Lord, these are things that, that have just got me. Lord, I'm, I'm just so confused and hurt and scared and I don't know what to do. But these are the things that makes me feel that way. And he said, hey, give me to me. Let me have that list. Give me that list. Leave the thing there where you're praying at. Leave it there. Let, let God look the thing over. Hey, if it scares him, he'll come running out there and talk to you about it. If you've got something written down there that he can't handle, he'll come let you know. Otherwise, once you lay it down and walk off from it, leave the thing. And when your mind starts to double back on you, and those, that those same cares that you've already carried to the Lord, remind yourself, no. Jesus has got that one. Jesus has covered that one. He'll take that one. That's a done deal. That's over. I'm not in. I'm not scared there anymore. I'm not worried about that anymore. I gave that to my Lord. God's real. God's real. And God can read your list. And you cast all them upon him. What a blessed thought to get up from there, dust yourself off, square your shoulders, look back at them and just hmm, like that and walk off. Leave them. Why not? Which one of them can you do anything about? Which one of them can you go pick back up off the paper and say, well, I can fix this one. Well, my Lord, if you could have fixed them, why didn't you even write them down? Or why are they scaring you? And why they got you worried? You can't fix them anyway. Amen. They're taking advantage. They're getting the advantage over you. Give them thanks to God. If you're going to be concerned and worried or whatever, find you something that you can change and change it. And when it gets changed, you're through with it. And you ain't worried about that no more. But don't say and dwell on the things you can't change. You can't do anything about Donald Trump's personality. You can't do nothing with the boy. I'm telling you. You can't do nothing with Nancy P. Brain Pulaski. You can't do nothing with her. Let it go. Give it to God. Don't lose no sleep over that. Amen? Why? Because you can't change it. God said, why are you worried? You can't change well, You can't add one cubic to your height. Uh, nor can you count, you can't even count the hairs of your head. He said, I've got them numbered and named. Won't you give that to me? Get, 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 get the list. If you want to carry a list around of cares, worries, concerns, carry around things that you can change. And when you change them, mark the dudes off. And that's the other thing you can change. Be busy about God bit. I bet God got a list of things He wants you to do. For Him. While He's doing something for you. What? Taking all of your cares upon Himself. And you do something for Him now. What do you think His care? He you know, just swap cares. Take the cares of the Lord on you. And you take your cares off of you and put them on him. Swap it with him. He's got cares that you can handle. Things you can do. You're his feet and his hands, his mouth on this earth. You're his representative, his, his ambassador, the Bible said. You're an ambassador of Christ. You're a soldier of the cross. You should be busy doing things like that instead of worrying about things you can't do anything about. Cast your cares upon him. So he has even your cares written down in this verse. Every care that you are carrying is in this verse. He won't miss one. Don't miss one. He knows what's wrong. 
He knows what's wrong. He knows why you're sad right now. He knows why you feel just out of kilter, out of whack, and you're flying out of whack. You don't know what's going to happen. The job's gone. The job's gone. The bills are still there. You know? Your mama's gone. Boy, what you do? What do you do? God will keep you so busy if you really want to know. He's got so many things for you to do. Because you know, this thing about this, this, this is just really good. He's got so many things for you to do. And you are the only one that can do them. You could do a better job at it than anybody else in the world. Anybody in the world. And I got some people in my mind right now that's in this room that if I had their ability to just touch somebody's heart just just, just by, by greeting them the way you greet them or treating them the way you treat them. If I had the, the ability to, to reach people's hearts like the person that I've got in my mind right now. Oh my goodness. What a, what a, what a great blessing. And if I had the power to do the things that you can do that I can't do. Man. So I have to find out the things I can do. Because God made me special too. I'm special. You can listen to me preaching for a while. You know I'm special. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It'll take long to figure out I'm special. So... And only I can do them. Amen. And there's a whole list of things like that that's got your name on it. That's why I can't do anything. Oh, yes, you can. God created you that way. He had something for you to do. He had something for you to do. You know them birds that he makes with a big bill? Got that big old, look, look like a sheep. Big, huge, big. You know what? He made them that way. He got something for them to do. With that, he wouldn't have just put that there for nothing. Right? He wouldn't have put that thing for you got on just anybody. Right? God's got it. God's got a sense of humor. He wouldn't put that smile on nobody but you. Right? It wouldn't fit nobody else. Think if he put this on Josie's face, you couldn't see her head. It wouldn't fit. Right? So God knows what he's doing. My snow wouldn't fit on Cody. So he made me this way. He made you that way. Amen. Just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you live. In, it's the greatest time to be alive. Amen. Greatest time to be alive. I can think of people like the old, the old, 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 old preacher. I think of John or Rice. If he was alive, in this time, my Lord, you would have to have you would have to tie him by the neck. I mean, Aaron would have chained. He'd be like a bulldog. I mean, he'd be getting people saved or eat their arm off one. I'm talking about hey, 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 hey. I mean, because hey, he was like that 50 years ago. And it wasn't nothing like the time we got now. They people out there that their hearts are failing for fear of what to do. They don't know the Lord. And if he had an opportunity to be thrown off in a batch of people like that, good Lord. My, you'd have to catch him in dark and bring him back to the house. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because he was a soul winning machine. I mean, he went wide open day and night. I think he won people to the Lord in his sleep. I think he went in his dream and got people saved. I, I, I mean, he was something. Carl Hatch. Same thing. Carl Hatch was about that high, redheaded, combed his hair straight back by Pallas. Had a big old hoopty do right there at the front of him. A hoopty do. Had a by Pallas. Had hair and red hair. He was about that high. He wore a cowboy boot. He looked like a little baby rooster. And he didn't hardly, when he got up on the pulpit, he never hardly get his feet touch the floor. He stayed up on the pulpit like that, like he fixed a plow for that. I'm serious. What if he was alive in a day like we got now? Man, he'd be going crazy. You'd have to put him in a coop. And 
just lay it out a little bit at a time and go catch him. Bring it back. I'm telling you. Great, great men of God that have preached their whole lives about this day is coming. This day is coming. It's here. Let's be joy. Let's be filled with joy about it. Let's be joyful about it. Glory to God about it. Then those people that's lost out there, that's hurting and scared, they'll look at you and say, what? What? I said, glory to God. What do you mean? We don't know what's going to happen. I said, I don't know. God does. I'm all right. Hey, I'm in the boat. I, I, I'm in his boat. Don't worry about it. Come over here. Let me talk to you in just a minute. Let me, let me talk to you about the Jesus that I know. They ask you to cast all your care upon him. He cares for you. He died for you. Why don't you call on him? Let him take away that fear that you have in your heart. Because he cares for you. One more point. <laughs> Not only have you in the verse, and your cares in the verse. <coughs> I like this. It's got Jesus in the verse. It says, cast all your cares upon Him. Him. He cares for you. Him. Jesus is in this same birth with me and my cares and Jesus all in the same little insignificant verse in there that they that, that preached on nearly enough to remind God's people how much He cares. And He puts me in it. He puts my cares in it. And He goes on and gets Himself in it. And he's right there in the same verse too. Him, me, and my cares. Cast it upon him. It says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. No one understands like Jesus does. Nobody can understand like Jesus does. You're going to be okay. Amen. You're going to be okay. And nobody can understand what you're feeling, what you're going through. And nobody can fix it but him. Him. Nobody can understand like Jesus can. Does Jesus care when your heart's in pain? You bet you. You bet you. He's reaching for you right now. Want to massage that heart. Want to remind that heart everything's okay. Everything, this is my world. This is my creation. You are my child. I am your God. I am able to do more than you can think of. Exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ask or think. I can do it. Who cares when my heart's weary? Jesus does. Who cares? When my heart's broke, Jesus does. Sitting at the house this afternoon, Teresa called my doctor, or they called her, or left her message and was wanting to give me the report on my MRI that I had done on Monday. And as the day wore on, and they didn't call back, they didn't call back, and I, I began to worry. I'll be honest with you. I began to worry. And then, Kind of getting panicky, you know. Well, how did they call me back? Is it bad? Is my cancer bad? Have they seen something? And sitting there and just getting worried more and more and more, and I thank God He brought this verse to my heart. And He goes, like, What are you doing? I said, I'm worrying myself to death. Why? Because they hadn't called yet. So, I got you. I can do this. I can do this. You need to get yourself ready to preach. You need to get yourself pulled together and get ready to preach. And if they don't call today, they'll call tomorrow. You can't change anything. If it's, if it's, if it's all over your whole body on the next phone call, you can't do a thing about it. I can't change it. Just trust me. He just cast the cares upon me, for I care for you. Yeah, but what if you did find out it was cancer again? He 
He still cares for me. He still loves me. He still got me. He still got me. He still got a plan. I don't know what it is, but he still got a plan. I'm still here. I'm still preaching, thank God. I'm still preaching. Folks have done been gone years ago. Done been counted out. But God's got me. I don't know when. I don't know if it's my last son. I don't know. But God does. Yeah. And I can trust Him to take care of me. He waits for the opportunity to take care of you. To come when nobody else could. To come when nobody else would. When nobody else could do any good, He waits for you. Just waiting to come running to you when you're ready to cast your cares upon Him. But He cares for you. Do you wonder if He cares? You go back to the cross. Look at the care that He had. He was beaten beyond recognition. He was hung out before the world. You know, in shame. He done it just for you. Oh yes, he cares about you. See how much? Go back to Calvary. Go back to Calvary in your mind. Kneel at the foot of the cross as he hangs there and look up and say, Master, do you care? And he looks down and says, that's why I'm here. That's why I died. That's why I gave myself. The one who cared enough to save us will care for all our cares. Did he take us home? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I've got nothing to worry about. Oh, I don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. Because the things that come on that telephone call, good or bad, I keep them. Amen. What I do, go another mile. Go another mile. Get in tune with the spirit that's in me. Accomplish the job he got me for. Get ready. Let him take care of it. Trust him to do it. And leave it. Yeah. Leave it. Hey, I've got pretty good at leaving it in the last few years of my life. I've been happy to just walk off and say, you know what? It is what it is. And I can't change it. But I belong to the one that can. Yeah. And I got I belong to the one that's writing the plan for my life right now. He got my name on there. He knows where I am. He knows where I'm going. He's writing out the plan. I just need to get close enough to him so I can hear what he's saying. Yeah. And quit worrying about the thing I cannot do anything about. Right, you hear tonight or under the sound of my voice. If you haven't called on Jesus, you can't do anything about your salvation but call on Him. He's the only one that can accomplish it. You can do all the good in the world. You can spend all the money in the world. You can go to church and join every church and be baptized in every mud puddle in the forest county. Not going to do you any good. But He can. He'll save you tonight. He'll save you tonight. Take those cares away. Take that fear away. And give you confidence in knowing that your God is big enough. Let's pray. Father, we close. I love you, Lord. I thank you for the privilege of sharing your precious word. God, and be reminded how much you care for us and how big of a God you really are. And God, that we're in the last days, and we know that. And God, how we navigate through these times, Lord, is up to you. But God, we want to follow you. We want to ask you to forgive us, Lord. God, if we've done anything, God, that's brought this on, if it's a judgment on our own sin, God, we lay those on this altar tonight. 
God, we ask you to forgive us, Father. Lord, we didn't mean to. And God, let us be busy about your business. God, your people have, have got so lax and lazy. Lord, let us be set on fire again by the power of the Holy Spirit. 